This is a short demonstration of the application of virtual world technologies to undersea warfare mission areas. My name is Steven Aguirre and this is my avatar. Welcome to Virtual Newark, the Naval Undersea Warfare Center's presence in Second Life. Over the last year we've been exploring many applications, but I'd like to focus on three specific examples. One popular use of virtual worlds is as a remote collaborative capability in support of conferencing. The example shown here is the United States Military Coalition of Second Life having a weekly meeting. Representatives of the Air Force, Army, and Navy meet in virtual space to discuss about collaborative issues and common practices of virtual worlds. Note that virtual world is not a silver bullet, but it does go beyond traditional video teleconferencing and other web applications. Specifically, it more closely supports the natural relationships that we would encounter in a real meeting. For example, it allows individuals to network with each other and for groups to have parallel discussions. This is because the information, be it video or audio, is not going through a single pipe. IT research groups such as the Gartner Group predict by 2012 that 2.1 million airline seats annually will be left unused because participants are using virtual conferencing capabilities instead. We're also exploring the use of virtual worlds for rapid prototyping and design. Historically, prototyping has been costly and complicated. This 1980s depiction shows wooden models as the mechanism to define new command and control spaces. Later, plywood cutouts would be used for the human interaction. Virtual world technology brings together the people and the 3D CAD models. For example, this virtual world representation of the USS Virginia Baseline Attack Center is now able to support remote accessibility by both the fleet and designers, allowing immersion into this information space as well as interaction with each other. This model supports rapid reconfiguration on the fly such that as designers need to make changes, one change is created and everybody else sees it. Using other technologies such as Quack Forums, operators can not only see the displays on the consoles but also have full remote access control to real hardware running elsewhere on the network, all at a group level and all from within a virtual environment. This supports ConOps experimentation and rehearsal, for example. One of the fastest growing uses of virtual worlds is for training and education. Consider, for example, the remote classroom where students and instructors remotely access a virtual space and have the voice and information transfer necessary to conduct a classroom event. Another type of training, however, is skill-based training where the students require access to specialized tools such as objects or software functions and these tools require practice and experience to master. Still a third type is scenario simulation training. In this case the virtual world is used to create a specific controllable and repeatable environment. It's the simulation of this environment that allows a group of people to come in and not only interact with that environment but most importantly interact with each other. The three examples I just provided have one thing in common, and that is the use of a virtual space to recreate a physical space. However, a fourth type of training called immersive learning takes full advantage of virtual characteristics, including gravity is optional and scaling is controllable, to create an information space to allow the students to completely immerse themselves into. Behind me is an immersive learning set of exhibits focused on the fundamentals of target motion analysis, or TMA. We start with the detection of acoustic energy and determination of how it's translated into bearing space. This is done by actually allowing the student to walk into a sphere array. Here we have the visualization of energy in a time bearing plot and the student is allowed to actually climb the waterfall display. In this exhibit we see the depiction of the bearings that are previously generated from the acoustic energy now onto a polar geoplot. This is in support of target motion analysis and the use of features such as speed strips to test multiple solution possibilities. At this exhibit here, we're looking at several plots, all focused on solution sensitivity analysis, including the parameter evaluation plot. As the operator selects Go, each of 900 different trial solutions are tested 
and displayed in geospace, on the difference plots, and in the parameter evaluation plot. It's important to note that each cell being generated represents a different trial solution. Both the height and the color is how well the particular sets of bearings match with trial solutions hypotheses. So indeed PEP is not a 2D surface but actually a 3D valley. In summary, I'd like to say that our continuing investigations are showing tremendous potential and application of these virtual world technologies across many of the USW mission areas. But like the pioneering days of the internet, the use cases and actual measurable benefits are still being determined. Thank you very much, and if you'd like some more information, I may be contacted at the email and phone number shown below, or you can search for Virtual Newick in Second Life. Thank you very much.